the channel and a new video on the Mercedes VO. So in the last video, Josh refurbished this whining gearbox for us. And today the plan is to actually get it back in there. Quite a lot of you in the last video did mention, why haven't you got it up in the air? Why aren't you using the gearbox stand? Now, although we've got everything in the workshop and the workshop serves perfect for us, it's not really kitted out for big vans. So this is pretty much as high as we wanna go with it. Hopefully that does answer your questions. Just before we do crack on today, what we do wanna mention is, for now the summer is here, throughout the summer months, we do like to chuck out the odd Sunday, Saturday video, etc. So make sure you hit that subscribe and always turn on the notification bell and allow all notifications. I just see quite a few comments of people saying, I've been waiting for this all day and I've been refreshing waiting for your video. If you've got that bell turned on guys, you'll get a notification straight away and then you can watch the video as soon as it comes out. Right, let's crack straight on. We need to get this one in there. Just before we do get started on the gearbox today, I want to say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, and that is Comline. For those of you guys that don't know what Comline is or who they are, Comline supply the trade and the play trade supply us. So you can go to your motor factors and ask for Comline products. On this particular van, we're going to be changing the rear brake discs and pads as they're squealing quite bad, and we're going to be using the coated discs that we absolutely have grown to love. We're also going to be changing the brake pads, pot cabin filter, fuel filter, oil filter, air filter, and going right through this van so it is a nice sorted van ready to go. Comline do brakes, suspension, steering, and much, much more. And quite often on their Facebook page, and actually at the moment, they are doing a giveaway competition. So I'm going to put Comline's links in the description down below. Check out their Facebook page, enter their competition, and of course, let us know how you get on. Let's crack on with it, mate. Just before we do fit the gearbox back in, you can probably just about see there, why I've got the clutch aligning tool in there. Although this van drove lovely and the clutch felt very nice as well, it's just, it's standard practice. We've got the gearbox out. We've gone to all that extreme of having it done. We have got a nice new three-piece clutch kit there for it. So I've put the aligning tool in there just for the moment, just really to hold everything in line and get the correct size. I need to go round inside there now, undo each of those star drives, and then just lift it all out of the way. Again, we are filming down quite low because we can't go really high, so I'll probably just whip that out without actually showing it, but you can see there's about six bolts around it, two, four, six, it's actually eight on there. So I'll get them out and we'll get that clutch removed. I very nearly forgot to actually show this part and I know quite a lot of you would have said, Rob, why didn't you show us that? The new clutch and the old clutch and the difference between them both. So although this clutch wasn't slipping, it wasn't slipping by any means, but taking the gearbox out having all that work done you are always going to change the clutch and i mean the, the difference between them is quite obvious to the eye but for those of you guys that don't actually know what what i mean by worn out so these rivets here you can see this one is very very near the top and you've got a little bit left on this one and on the new one here you can see how deep down these rivets are and these are your wear plates on the clutch. So although it's 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 only being used while it's driving, it's not moving, but you're up and down on the clutch constantly, and that is what wears the clutch out. So it was worth doing regardless. You can see they are like for like the clutches. It does say on these clutches, gearbox side. So you can't really get it round the wrong way. 99% of them do say that. And you can see they are exactly the same. I think this clutch has been changed previously before. I should think so with the mileage that's on it. It probably has had a clutch at some point. But you could have left that clutch in there. And there's probably another maybe five, seven thousand miles on it. But we don't want to sell the van to someone. And then in six, seven months time, they got to have the gearbox removed to have a new clutch put in it. It's out now. We might as well get it in there. And it's a three piece kit as well. So we've got a new release bearing there for it. 
So I'll get this one swapped out. It does come with a couple of different ends. So obviously this release bearing is used on other models, but we get all that swapped out and then well, I'll probably get this clutch, got the aligning tool there, get this new clutch actually fitted back in. Little tip, just before you do, always fit a clutch. You've got the gearbox out anyway. It's not gonna hurt you. Just try it on your splines. And then you know definitely that that's okay because it wouldn't be no good to bolt this on and then it turns out your spline's a little bit bigger and it's the wrong clutch for the vehicle. So very simple test, costs nothing and takes seconds to do. All right, let's get that one bolted back on. And just like that, the new clutch is fitted. Hopefully you can see right up the center there. I actually used the clutch aligning tool to get that bang on. And there is actually only six bolts around the outside there. I did say there was eight earlier. There is just six. So that's all in there, all tightened up. Now I've just got to move on to the release bearing. So just a couple of 10 mils holding that on and you've got one pipe here to disconnect. We get that swapped out and get the new one in there. And then this gearbox ultimately should be ready to go back in. I have to wait till Chris comes out to help me lift that in now. Again, I know a lot of you, actually all of you will appreciate we're up against the door here. It's raining outside today, so there, we can't actually show lifting it in, but we'll try and capture a bit of it, definitely. Well, that was a little bit harder than it normally was. That's probably because Chris was just watching me do it. Ah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's quite an heavy gearbox, to be fair, and it actually went okay, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, not too bad. What we had to do, because the driver's side drive shaft obviously is a split shaft, so you can see it rejoins here and then there's like an extension and it was a little bit too close so chris actually pulled this away put some blocks of wood in there just to hold it out of the way once we got it hooked on those two top bolts i think we was laughing mate wasn't we once we done that so there's only actually we've cut in now but there's only actually two bolts left which are start motor and a little bracket just down here where chris is working and then it's going to be a case of just putting everything back where it needs to be and bolting it all up so overall not that bad to do but yeah very very heavy gearbox chris wasn't it it was yeah but we're in there now and we've got the main mount the support here that's all bolted down and all tight so we're just going to carry on in the background i'm going to stick the gear change cables on chris is going to connect up the clutch fluid so all good so far the good days here's to the sorrows if this is a mistake i know about tomorrow i don't want to fight no more because i don't feel the need no more no just want to make it stop maybe it's something in the water or maybe we just hit the end of the road right now it doesn't even matter it's too late right a little update well that clutch was a nightmare chris wasn't it yeah. that was probably one of the hardest clutches we've ever had to bleed up but everything under there now is all buttoned up all done the last thing is obviously the lower arms and the rack and what we've decided to do is completely finish the underneath of this van so we're now at the point of move everything out of the way and we're going to get this bed back on would have been a lot easier if I changed these after, wouldn't it? Look how easy they are to get to. But yeah, we're going to get that lined under there. That was quite difficult because when getting it off, you had to fold this out away. But I'm sure we'll get there with it and we'll manage. But let's get it on there and then get it back down on its wheels. And then everything can be done from up the top here. The gear change cables was actually really easy to put on from underneath because you've got so much room under there and you had a lot more grip. You can see I was actually sitting under here. Let's actually get under here and show you guys. Because I'm only lickle, I was able to sit here and just grab them and clip them all in. So you can see there's plenty of room. But now I think this is gonna be a little bit difficult, but we get there with it. Let's slide it under, get the main man under here to help me and we'll get it bolted back on.
good run. Don't say we did it. Well, this is fun and games today. I mean, look at it out here. All the floor's wet. To slow down the time lapse, you push those three little dots in the top right-hand corner. And that last bit of time lapse is definitely worth slowing down and actually having a laugh. Chris, we didn't know what to do there, did we? One minute the sun is bright shining and then it just starts tipping it down. We had the jack actual handle here stuck underneath the bed, getting the bed lifted up so we couldn't shut the door. You can see how deep the water is in the gully. Started fl flooding out around the door here. Chris was like, we've got to get that jack out, Rob. And we couldn't get it out because we had the bed halfway up in the air. So we couldn't shut anyway. You kind of get a gist of what I'm saying. You would have seen us shuffling about and running about trying to get it done there and get it out. The subframe is now on. We've got it bolted on to a degree. I say bolted on to a degree. We've got the main bolts here all holding it back in place. So we've got three this side, three this side, two at the front. Chris is just putting this wishbone back on. But he's actually at the moment actually undoing a drive shaft. Why are you undoing that, Chris? Because uh, it uh, doesn't need to be on there yet. Who's done it up? Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> well, I actually did the drive shaft nut up and tightened it up in there, the little housing. And Chris needs to be able to pull it that way to get the lower arm back in the uh, back in where it sits there. So really moving along with it. Once he's got that back in, we're just going to run around and tighten everything up underneath here so that we can just bring it down on the ramp and finish everything up top a lot of work that there today it really was a lot of work getting all of that back together and it's quite awkward that we couldn't go up too high but we have put the air filter back on header tanks back on everything's bolted down chris is just going through the gears there we've refilled the gearbox through the refill there and he's ready to fire it up and actually he's just going to go through the gears and make sure that everything's okay well it started up that's a good thing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. What's that, fourth? Yeah. That's it. I don't know if that. Yeah, I don't know because the other wheel won't ain't turning the other side. Yeah. We'll have a quick look, double check everything, mate. But feels okay, does it? So you won't notice you on the road and nah. the road test, but let's get it let's, yeah let's get it buttoned up so finally after well quite a long time it's been on the ramp we're actually before we get on with any of the other jobs we're not even putting the wheel trims on we're going to take it out for a run just go through all the gears and make sure that it is all back to normal and that wine has completely gone so let's pull her out mate we could do have a nice tidy up underneath it That's nice to see. Nice to see it coming out. Here goes nothing. He's taking a run up. I did just say, as long as we get fifth in the yard, we just want to test it because really we want to get all the other jobs done. getting a lick on there wasn't he he nearly went through the edge <laughs> oh dear mate you nearly went through the edge oh, I just managed to get it in the fifth yeah what 
the little split second that was in there sounded fine. Oh, did it? But you're never going to get it in the six. No, nah. is, it, is it all tight? Yeah, all feels. What's the clutch feel yeah, like? Lovely and light. Gearbox feels brand new, clutch feels Actually, brand new. from just driving that, the whole van feels... Tight and nice, nice yeah. which is what we want. We've had yeah. that whole bed off. Yeah. It, it's the worst thing ever when you put it all back together and you get donk, ding, dong. It's awful, yeah. isn't we it? We won't but know for sure till we... Go for a proper road test. test. Should we get it in and finish off the other jobs anyway? So. Because there is quite a long road test on this. It's out of MOT. Yeah. So let's get it done. Ready and we'll, for MOT. We'll get it, no, we'll actually take it for MOT yeah. uh, on the road test. We try and get this one nipped in the bud, and I think we agreed we're actually going to do the numbers in this one as well. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Right, let's get it back in let's the workshop. People watch it. Sorry? Let's hope people watch it. Yeah, definitely. We got told off quite a lot Indeed. in the Audi A1, but you know we're, we're just trying new things aren't we and we can only see what we're reading right let's get this one done little test run out the yard went fine we're gonna have a proper bit of action now and actually crack on get this finished we've got rear discs and pads to do mot nice clean and a couple of other little niggly bits and this one should be ready to go let's crack straight on with it i was your first love and you were my first one Cheers to all the memories, the venom and the remedies, yeah Promise I won't forget, yeah Maybe it's something in the water Or maybe we just hit the end of the road Right now it doesn't even matter It's too late not to let it go On that little piece of time lapse there, uh, you would have actually seen Chris hold up one of the springs now when we was driving this, it was making a god awful grinding. Well, it, you couldn't hear it driving. It was only when you pulled away, wasn't it? Or you just lifted off to coast to a stop. You could just hear it. But both of us agreed it was a, metal to metal. We thought it was a pad, didn't we? We thought it was a pad. So Chris did show this up quite close. It's actually one of the retaining clips. For one of the shoes. It's actually one of the shoes. It's snapped. Could you get us a brand new one, mate? Could you yeah. grab one just so that we can do a comparison? There is another one on there. Yeah, it's like that end. That's the good one. one. Oh, is it? Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> it's that end. Yeah. Oh, that shows well, doesn't it? I don't think it's actually broke. It's bent round, no, doesn't no, it's it? It's missing a bit. Oh. So it is, yeah. So it is. Yeah. That's the bit that hooks on the back plate. It is indeed. So. Chris is going to crack on with this, but we really, really want to do get this one done. So I'm just going to move I know up. on the bench, Rob. Are they? The old ones. Right, so you've got it, you're getting it all set up, yeah, ready to go. Yeah, new retainers, so. This really is going to be a well sorted van, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I'm going to let Chris carry on with that, and I'm actually going to get on with the service, because we yeah. need to get this one done, and it but is booked in for an MOT. Just to show, the reason it was making the noise was, I don't know if you want to show on the bell of the disc, Rob. It was rubbing. These run inside the disc bell. And, it, and that shoe was sitting like that, so it that edge was rubbing. Was yeah, rubbing. Yeah, there's probably there'll be a few places I've not seen. Yeah, that he's set up with the. It's like a little drum, the bell of the disc. So that's the handbrake. Yeah, uh, that's the right. Yeah. Is, yeah, that's is right. The, so that's right. It. Let's carry on then. Bit of a strange design getting those hooks in there, mate, right? They and are tricky. That they was very, tricky. very tricky because you have to actually compress this spring quite some... Let me put that oil filter down. You have to really compress this spring somewhat as the little hook on the back and you actually have to twist it nice whilst degrees. pushing it 90 yeah. degrees. So but very, very hard to do. They're manual adjusting, you said, Chris. Yeah, manual adjuster here. And that is your adjuster there. Yeah. So, so you got to offer the new disc on, and you put a screwdriver through one of the wheel nuts, and you can turn the adjuster. Just keep pinching it until it's... Yeah. yeah, yeah, tighten it, and then back it off a little bit. But you see, whichever way you need to go, yeah. you just lever it. Yeah. Quite a 
we'll let you get that on there. I have actually drained the oil out and done a filter. I'm just gonna get this filter back on yeah. and we're just gonna carry on. This is working well today because I'm getting one side done Why Chris is getting this side done. And then once we do bring it down, we can do the air filter and the pollen filter. So we'll let you get that sort yeah. of set up, yeah, mate, yeah. and then we'll yeah. show some more. Just like that, Chris is done there. New brake shoes, new disc, new pads, all running very, very smoothly now. And it's all gonna be really, really nice. The foot brake will be nice on the back brakes. And of course, that horrible racket that it was making. Again, just a quick one with these Comline discs. So your pads are that thick. It is only going to wear away the silver on this edge here. So you, when you look through your wheels, your brake discs actually stay looking like that. And that top edge stays like it as well. We fit them on the Skoda, didn't we? And you run it for a year ago. Yeah. And they look like brand new. They still look like new. So, right, let's get on and get the other side done. But I think we'll do that off camera. People yeah. kind of get a gist here, don't they? So then we need to lower it down. The oil's out. The filter's changed. We need to lower it down. Get that new uh, air filter in there, pollen filter. The oil. And this one's ready for an MOT, mate. Yeah. Right, let's carry on. So fourth gear. Fifth and sixth. Yeah, perfect. I know this is a bit of deja vu for you, but if you didn't watch part one and hear that gearbox whining, Chris, I'll get you to pop a card up in the top corner yeah, for that. Yeah. This was unbearable to drive. I mean, I, I drove it, was it like 180 something miles in sixth gear and it was atrocious. So again, huge shout out to Josh for rebuilding that gearbox, made a lovely job of it. And it is exactly how it should be now. I'm really, really happy with it. We are on our way over to MOT. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't know about you, Chris, that's our last hurdle. Yeah. As yeah. long as it passes through that MOT, we're pretty much well, done with this we've one. We've been right around it, so we have been right around got, it. got a good chance. Let's go to MOT and then we'll go back to the yard and crunch the numbers. That's it. Let's do it. did actually forget to put that wheel trim on the other side but look at that after a clean we have said from day dot it's got a few little dinks around it and it has got a few little dinks but we're not actually going to do any more to this van bit of bumper gel on the bumpers smartened them right up we have got one wheel trim i need to get one ordered tonight really so that when this goes it is there for it but all done. Let's go inside and crunch the numbers. So apparently, Chris, everyone's favourite bit. Well, we can't keep making a joke of that, but genuinely, guys, we was just trying new stuff, wasn't we? And we well, were only watching the analytics, ex wasn't we? Exactly. A I'm, lot of viewers drop away in the last segment of the video. And that wasn't in the numbers in general. That no, was across, across the board. Across the board. So as soon as they see my mug at the end, they're out. Yeah. They know that that's the end. <laughs> So huge thank you to um, the sponsor of this video, Comline guys. Check out their link, it's in the description down below and the link's down there for their competition also. So let's get down to it and do the numbers. I've got Chris in the background today because I've just had to ask him to check how much that van's worth on eBay and he's just sitting there flicking through. So purchase price of the van. You know that we bought it from the previous owner. 
He got offered it back from the insurance. Well, he offered to buy it. He rung us and said, would you like it? I don't want it. And of course, we bought it. We also give him a drink over the top of what he had to give back for it. And we give two and a half thousand pounds for that van. It was cheap when we bought it and you buy your profit. You get your profit when you buy a vehicle. That's the way we do it anyway. Train fare to go and get it. This was the one where I got lost, wasn't it? I can't remember. I ended happened. up, yeah. It's a regular occurrence. Right? All right, mate, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up in the wrong train station, but I managed to get there in the end anyway. And that was £52. Fuel, I chucked 50 quid in it to get home. Two rear panels. Bought them both from the main dealer, and they've gone back on exactly where they come off on their factory welds. £183. Rear doors, bumper, and trim. That was the spiteful bit. £600. They was hard to get as well. We really looked around and they turned out to be on our doorstep, which was unbelievable. Paint and materials, Chris painted this one, 120 pound. Seat belts, 125 pound. Again, got quite lucky with them online because I looked for at least a week to find some and you had a good look as well, didn't you? Clutch kit, 215 pound. Gear oil, 48 pound. Engine oil, £56. Gearbox rebuild. Now, you have got to bear in mind, Josh, he looked after us, done us a bit of a favour. And, you know, maybe to get his name out there. And, you know, we, we take our hat off to someone that does a job like that. He made it look easy, didn't he? And he charged us £400. But Chris did say, it's a bit awkward putting the price in there because 99% of his customers are actually going to turn up with their van and he's gonna to have to remove the gearbox, rebuild it, and then put it back in. So, you know, don't take that price of, that's what you're gonna pay. The windscreen was a spiteful one in that, or was it? It's got all sensors in it, DB, um, DAB radio aerial, it's all in there, 200 pound. And that was Liam looking after us. MOT we just had done was 40 pound, and the valet we just had done was 20 pound. We got a total of £4,009 for that van. That's definitely, definitely, considering like what's gone into it, that's a cheap van. But that has been a lot of work. That van's been sat on the ramp for... How long's it been on well, the we ramp? We did have a little jolly. In we had a jolly in between, but that van's probably been sat on the two ramp weeks. for two weeks. You would have watched two Audi A1 videos that me and you did outside. Yeah. You also would have watched the Bolingo one where we changed the fifth gear and that was outside as well. So, you know what the van owes us? 4,610 quid, let's call it. How much do we want for it? And that's where I rolled in. Chris, please have a quick look. Right. The cheapest one you could find is damage repaired. Yeah, there's one on there, 2017 damage repaired, and that is 7,999 pounds. And what's the mileage? Uh, no, I can't see the mileage on right, that. Right, okay, next, next one. Next one is a 66 plate with 136. Yep. And that's 9,000, well, 50 pounds short of 9,000. Yep. There's then two, I found here, 17 plates, the same van, uh, one has 111,000. Yep. And that is 9,950. Yep. And then the other one, is 10,995 and that has 80,000 on it. So right, we have a short of 11, 11 grand. We haven't discussed this, but you know where it owes us? Yeah. 7,250? Yeah, sounds about right. Be the That's cheapest it. one in the world. Yeah. And I, I, we're doing all right out of that. Yeah, I, haven't, right. I haven't worked out what a pre tax profit will be, but let's call it 7,250 and that can go on Instagram after the weekend. I'm gonna run, is that what I'm gonna run around in that? Just, I think, yeah. just, just because the gearbox has been in pieces, we've major been, rebuild, we, a major rebuild, we've been through it, we've done a wheel filter, air filter, still got to do the pollen filter. That handbrake might want slightly adjusting now I've driven it, yeah. because it does seem like there's a few clicks on it. So little bit of snagging in the background, but next week, that one will be on Instagram for 7250. And of course, if you do want it, uh, drop me a message on Instagram once the advert goes live, not before. And of course, I'll call you back in the order that they come in. That is the end of today's video, but I do want to move on to a couple of other little tiny, tiny bits. Hopefully you hear this at the end. 
then there's some new music in this video. I appreciate the same music is not for everyone. But someone learned how to download music while I was away in Lithuania, sitting in the hotel room. And I've got a huge, huge catalogue now of thousands of music to, songs to use. So let me know what you think on these ones. I, I mean, we take, we read all the comments and it's nice to know that the majority like something. We do want to try and chop and change a little bit. And um, yeah, let us know about that. The last and final thing. The yard where we work, guys, actually belongs to Chris. It is private property, and he's got it very well secured. But just lately, and I, this is not a rant or a moan, is it? Because genuinely, we're normal people like everybody else, and we will stop and speak to anybody. But Chris's property is out of bounds. We've had quite a few people lately turning up, at, turning up, ringing the bell, and it, it's just not fair. It, it's not fair at all. And, and, and also, just sorry to interrupt. Yes, but speak when, up. when we are in the middle of filming something, yeah, we keep getting yes. kind of interrupted. Just for an instance, we're not going to get into it no. too much. But yesterday we was filming. How many times did your buzzer go? Six times. Six times. The same person. The same person. And it, it's just, it's just not something that we can't have people here while we're filming. And it is, we're filming on our phones as well. Anyway, we're, like we said, it's not a rant. We're not going to moan. But just so everybody knows, it is completely out of bounds. Don't forget, please like, subscribe and share. And we'll see you very, very soon in the next one.